Hi, let me, I don't, this chair is blocking your view. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to get started because we got a lot to cover in just 15 minutes, 14 minutes, and I want to leave time for questions, answers. There is a challenge because now this is my third time and I, I may forget something or I may repeat something. <laughs> so feel free to ask. My name is Jeremy Johnson. I'm the executive director of Newark Arts. Some people call us Newark Arts Council. We're not, we're not called that anymore. We just Newark Arts. We are an independent nonprofit. It's important you remember that before I get to the end of this. We are not the government. We're an independent nonprofit. We actually seek funds and then we give out funds for different things. But we work very closely with the government. Very close. A few years back, Newark elected a, a mayor, a new mayor. His name was Raz Baraka. He's the mayor right now. And he had many committees to help figure out what things he needed to address. So there was a committee on the arts. There were dozens of people on that committee. And they said, what this city needs is a cultural plan. We need to get coordinated. We get to figure out what's going on with culture and the arts. So the mayor said, that's a good idea. At the same time, one of our major city organizations, city funders, city uh, anchors, Prudential, said, you're right, Mr. Mayor, we need that. Oh, by the way, hey, Newark Arts, Jeremy, we want you to do this cultural plan, and here's some funding to get it done. And we said, ooh, boy, that's a tall order. <laughs> but we were up for the task, because our mission is to power the arts to transform lives. Mm -hmm. So with private funding mostly, with the encouragement of this committee from the mayor, we embarked on an 18-month process that is still not finished to create Newer Creates, a community cultural plan. So here's a little commercial. Elizabeth Murphy earlier said that Newark is about to do a, another session. It's called Call to Collaboration. We're, gonna, we're gonna actually going to submit, and we're going to be talking about Newark Creates at that. There's over 200 people registered. So this is our last chance to share back with the community so they could feedback to us, did we get this right? So what did this plan tell us? We had lots of uh, focus groups interviews, surveys, we studied other cities, how they're handling it. And by the way, those other cities, their plans were government funded. They had all kinds of government funding it. We we're out there, our wonderful our, uh, nonprofit doing this. But what did we learn? Three things. I'm going to leave you with three things. It's like a Presbyterian sermon, right? Three points, right? They said, we need money. Is that a surprise? No. But funding was number one, money, funding. But not just money generally for the arts, funding for the small, medium-sized individual artists, the artists who aren't usually funded. There's been a number of studies the last few years about where does art funding go in this country? Who gets it? Well, it's not going to small, medium-sized groups that are African-American or Latino or women-led. It's not. It's going to major, the major big institutions. Even though statistics show, when America goes to the arts, they tend to go to the galleries, or they go to the smaller events, or to the jazz clubs. So that was what came out. Funding for those that have traditionally not been serviced by, by investments, especially from private, but also public as well. So funding was part. The second part of this was about the issue of space. Space for arts, space for arts to happen. So that's what this, do you know what that is? That's that little Google point thing. Good, I, I was working on that. <laughs> so funding space, what do I mean by space? No surprises, if you're in a big city right now in America, especially on the coast or you're dealing with the G word, what's the G word? Gentrification or displacement. In New York we tend to like the term displacement. Artists have been in Newark for 20, 30 years, visual artists, they've been living in a place, rents are going up, developers coming in, says, you gotta go. Um, can we manage that better in Newark so, we, so we're not that mirror of the tale of two cities? That's what we heard from, from the, the public and artists in this plan. We need spaces, spaces to live, spaces to do art, whether it's music, visual arts, dance. Arts are everywhere in Newark, but it's getting harder and harder, especially for smaller spaces. Let me clarify. We have some wonderful large spaces that you all have visited. NJ Pack, I worked there for 12 years, so I know. 2,700 seats. Prudential Center, you know, Cher was just there a couple weeks ago. Did any of you at the Cher concert? Come on. 
baby boomer right here. Loves here. So we have large spaces, but what about those smaller spaces that really make cities unique? If you ever go to Nashville or New Orleans or Austin, it's not the big centers, it's those, those little clubs and the uh, places for, uh, where artists take place. Small street America where entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial artists take place, where they're working. Remember, artists are entrepreneurs too, so I want to talk about that issue of place. It was very important. Then finally, coordination. How do we coordinate all the arts? Is there a calendarizing mechanism? Can our nonprofit arts groups, can they work together on a common health insurance plan? Or can we be co-located together where we can feed off each other? So one way that happened while this plan was happening was through the efforts of Rutgers University. I have to give them a special shout out. Now, they're not the only ones, but it happened in a way that it just, it really talks to leadership. Uh, Nancy Cantor was appointed the, the chancellor for the city of Newark Rutgers and she bought a huge, she worked with some funders to buy a gigantic old department store right in the middle of downtown and it had been empty. Had it been empty 10 years? No. Had it been empty 20 years? No. 30 years? More than 30 years. I arrived in Newark 35 years ago and it, it was just boarded up. Today, uh, it's no longer boarded up. Yes, there's a Whole Foods there. Yes, it is. Yes, there's a, a, a PetSmart there. But right in the rear of the building is three stories of an arts collaboratory, they call it, where community people can go and they could paint, they can print, they can learn dance, they can learn video, they can learn. There's a gallery. It's where music and dance and visual all come together. And this was made possible through Rutgers investment. And that's a good example of what this plan wants to do more of. Not just one collaborative space with funding, but across the city. So I have to stop right now, of course, because the person who just joined our circle was the one who helped lead this effort for so long, Susan Shear. <laughs> Susan Shear. So as Susan passed the baton on to us in these last several months, she said, we're giving it you, this plan to you to polish, polish it up before it's presented. So we're polishing it now, if I don't fall down. So what are the three points again? The funding the importance of space, and the importance of coordination. One thing we heard at every session, and Susan can vouch for us, when it came to coordination, people said, there's so much happening. We need a calendar, a common calendar. Did that come up? Susan's nodding. Time and time again. We still don't have an answer to that, but that was a call. How do we do that? Can we do that with Newark Arts, our independent calendar? WBGO has a fabulous calendar. Um, do we use Google? Do we use Facebook? But that's an issue. The other thing around coordination was shared services. Uh, small arts organizations, they need help with insurance or they need help with uh, maybe with uh, co-location. Now I sound feel like I'm repeating myself. <laughs> but maybe I said that at the last session. I want to say something now that I know I didn't say. Our thinking about this plan changed a little bit from the beginning to now. When we started, we did talk about how the arts could be uh, a way to solve social issues. How do we work with public safety, with health? And that is still part of the plan. We're still doing that. But what we also learned while this is happening, two things happened that, that are really good examples. First, two art galleries closed in Newark that had long been a part of our ecosystem. City Without Walls closed, and Al Jaira closed their doors. Big part. The second thing I want to point out that happened during this plan is artists literally started dying. Literally. These were not artists who were 70 or 80 or 90. Jerry Gant, a pillar of our society. Um, we had Rodney Gilbert. We had Bria, who was a fabulous poet. And I could go on and on. So there was something going on. Five, where artists did not have access to the insurance or the health care. There was some, so I just say that we were looking at these systems, but right in front of us were leaders of the arts community in Newark who were not getting access. So coming out of this, a couple things have happened already. How do we undergird artists? Not just artists as a tool to solve all of those social issues, that's important, but how do we support the artist community themselves? So we as an organization, we've now started some sessions around how do you get insurance, health insurance? How do you sign up? We just did one, was fully subscribed. We're going to be doing that in partnership with people who know insurance. We don't know much, but how do we make those connections? That gets back to insurance. The second thing around place and coordination, 
we have been struggling with one neighbor, several neighborhoods in Newark, but one neighborhood in particular is called Lincoln Park, which is just a mother load of arts organizations surrounding a park. They've never worked together though. Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District, Newark Symphony Hall, Newark Boys Chorus School, Newark School of the Arts. They're all around this park that had and a lot of need. There was, you know, the weeds are growing up, they need new sidewalks. So we went to the mayor and the mayor came to us and says, we need to coordinate around this historic cultural district. And I'm so pleased to share, and I'm gonna give this plan credit for it, that last 10 days ago, the city council approved, I have my fake gavel here, the city, gavel, the city council approved a seat grant of $200,000 to see the coordination around this Lincoln Park neighborhood. That is a wonderful start. But we've got at least, we have in Newark five wards with at least 21 neighborhoods. Susan always reminded me, it's not just about the wards, it's about the neighborhoods. So we have more work around this coordination to make Newark a city where the arts can thrive and where we can make sure that Newark is a city of the arts for the future. Questions, comments, observations? Yes, Winnie. Yes, I, I live in Newark, and um, I would like to commend you for all the wonderful work that you've been doing. And I have seen it, including, um, you know, the art crawl, the yearly art crawl that you do, um, you know, all the other art projects, and then also the murals. Along the murals play a big role, yes. And um, throughout the city. And also incorporating art with the community gardens. You know, that. Wow, that yes. You have a little to do with the gardens, don't you? The oh, urban garden. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, but um, I commend it. And um, my um, only critique is not with the Arts Council, but in, in terms of um, the community of artists, it's um, sometimes they get a bit territorial. And so I remember I was trying to get an art exhibition going in Newark, and I went around to the different smaller galleries, you know, and none of them would take a look at um, the artwork. And, and so it winded up that I had to have the art exhibition in Westchester, New York at Bethany Art and, and so it was totally rejected because they didn't know me as an artist, you know, and it wasn't even my artwork. It was for International Women's Month, and it was a collection of women artists, you know, from Canada, Latin America, and also the United States. What a great story about the importance of Busting silos. Yeah. If those silos have been busted in the time. Um, so it's like this little competition. I don't know if it's because of lack of funding, so everybody's trying, you know, that could be. I think it's a combination. I, I, I want to add to that, Winnie, about the funding. It takes money just to show up at a meeting. Some of you work for organizations, or you may have your money of your own, but if you, if you were busy with your nonprofit of two people and you really want to be here, but you wouldn't be. So sometimes it takes just general operating support to be a stronger, small arts organization. So we, could, we do have time to meet with you and talk to you and plan with you. But I'm, if the art galleries are struggling, and that's, my point is this. What came out of the study was the need for funding, but not just any kind of funding. What I'm learning from national funders in the arts, we need general operating support, multi-year support. So what we are doing on Newark Art side as a result of this plan, stay tuned, we already make small mini grants every year. They're usually project based, called Art Start for things, but we're, we're gonna add on to that other types of grants, you'll be happy to know, that are gonna be general operating support. Not huge yet, ultimately, if we follow this plan, we're gonna have a, a $5 million fund that'll be sustainable through, I'm looking at Susan because we've been through this kind of, through zoning or through uh, the special co uh, collaboration with developers or through a combination of philanthropy and public. But that's what this, this did not answer where the money comes from. It's funny, nobody asked me that. I just said, we need money, but the tricky part is where does it come from? Some cities have percent for the arts, of course, and we've talked about that. It's on the books in Newark, but it has not been enforced. And Yes, Susan. Yes. So, you know, part of it is, as we know, in any city, you know, you always have these hiccups, 
you know, you start going up that mountain and then you push back down. So looking at different ways to leverage through different, uh, again, through developers, through policy, change of policy, and these kinds of things. You know, we'd love to wave our magic wand and say, you know, all this money is going to come through. And we're even told during the plan, you know, don't expect to get national funding. Not until the plan and the implementation. So that's where, you know, we talked about the point of as you start to get the implementation going in neighborhoods based on what people are sharing, that's where that action is. And then that's the implementation that causes, uh, I'm going to say that reaction or that positivity to go move forward and people start moving and seeing. So we're starting to see, so we didn't wait for the plan to be finished, as Susan pointed out, to do implementation. We see that at Lincoln Park, we see Fairmount, um, soon to be Clinton Hill, so stay tuned. A lot of great things are coming out beyond what you usually hear about the great things at NJPAC and the museum. It's going to be bubbling up, our, our gumdrops, as Susan and I, around the city. So I had a question.